Okay, so let's look at question number four. Solve by completing the square. Okay, so the process for completing the square is first you want to take anything that doesn't have an x with it, move it to the other side. So this leaves me with four, x squared plus 14x equals 5. You have to remember when you complete the square, you need a leading coefficient of 1, which is the case here. We take this, that, this 14, we divide by 2 and square it. So we're going to add 14 over 2 squared. And what you add to one side of the equation, you have to add to the other. We keep solving. So this becomes x squared plus 14x. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 7 squared is 49. So it's 5 plus 49. What then will happen is th all of this, and this is why we complete the square, it becomes x plus 7 squared. If you don't believe me, you can FOIL out x plus 7 squared. Remember, x plus 7 squared is x plus 7 times x plus 7. So you FOIL that out, you will arrive back at x squared plus 14x plus 49. Let me take this away so I have more space. Um, the way I got there was you just take this number when you complete the square the first part where you divide by 2 and you get 7. That's always what ends up happening with that value there. So it's always this number just divided by 2 will become this. Okay. So now what? Uh, this is equal to 50, what, 54. 49 plus 5 is 54. And from here, we just use the square root property to finish it off. So you take the square root of both sides. So x plus 7 equals plus or minus 54. Square root of 54, sorry. And from here, we subtract 7. So we get x equals, I'm going to write it as negative 7 plus or minus square root of 54. They're probably going to ask you to rationalize the square root. So this means that we're going to take square root 54. We know 9 times uh, 6 is 54. Square root of 9 is 3. So this is negative 7 plus or minus 3 square root 6. And these are your answers. Cool. All right. Let's look at the next one. Now, the next one's a little bit harder because the leading coefficient is 8, so we're going to have to do something a little different than before. But we're going to start this the same way. We're going to add 32 to both sides. So x squared plus 3x equals 32. And now, there's a couple ways of deal dealing with this. The easiest way, I think, is to divide through by 8. And this gives me x squared plus 3 eighths x equals 4. And so now I have a leading coefficient of 1. So then we have to complete the square. So we divide by 2 and square. Remember, when you divide by 2, it just means you have a 2 on the bottom and then square. And what you do to one side, we got to do to the other. So what happens here? This becomes x squared plus 3 eighths x plus, this is going to become 3 over 16, and then we're going to square it, which is 9 over 256 equals 4 plus 9 over 256. Since both of these are the same thing, I don't have to recalculate it. Okay, so let's keep going. So now, what, I, what do I want to do? Well, I want to clean up this side here. And while I'm at it, I might as well uh, read this as a quantity squared. So what is what quantity squared does it become? Remember, we said it's just what was inside here. So this is just going to be x plus 3 over 16. And this is going to equal to 4. Well, let's clean this up. So what do I need to do with the 4? I'm going to write 4 is 4 over 1. And... I need 256 here, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 256 plus 9 over 256. I need 256 because you can't add fractions unless you have this common denominator, so the common denominator here being uh, 256. Okay, mm, what do I want to do?
do from here? Well, let's clean it up. So this is going to become x plus 3 over 16 squared equals to, uh, we got to do 4 times 256. So we end up getting 1024 over 256 plus 9 over 256. And when I clean that, I end up getting more space. x plus 3 over 16 squared equals 10, 33 over 256. Okay, kind of nasty. Let's keep going. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square root, and we're going to get x plus 3 over 16 equals to plus or minus the square root of 1033 over the square root of 256. And so when we keep going and solving this, we end up getting x plus 3 over 16 equals to plus or minus square root 1033 over 16. And all I got to do now is move the 3 over 16 to the other side. And this gives me x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root 1033 over 16. And there's my final answer. So that's a little painful. Um, 1033 is actually prime, so you know you can't break that one down. Square root 256 is 16. But there you have it. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's look at the next one. So more of the same. Now this one's interesting because they actually make your life a little easier in the beginning. They already have 11 off to the side. So I'm just going to divide through by 4. We're going to get y squared plus 2y equals 11 over 4. And then I'm going to complete the square which we know is divide this value by 2 and then square it. And what you do to one side, you got to do to the other. This becomes y plus 2y plus 1 equals 11 over 4 plus 1. And so from here, we're going to take y plus 2y plus 1, and we're going, to, we're going to rewrite this as y plus 1 squared. Again, if you have any doubts, it's like what we did before. We take this 2, and we divide by 2. We, we get 1. That's the value. Okay, so just like right here, we broke this down to when this number was divided by 2. And right here, when 14 was divided by 2. Same thing. Okay, so how do we deal with the other side? Well, more of the same. We're going to do 11 over 4. 1 is 4 over 4. Again, we're converting it to 4 over 4 because we can't add fractions unless they have the same denominator. So this becomes y plus 1 squared. 11 plus 4 is 15, all over 4. And then... We take the square root of both sides, and we get y plus 1 equals plus or minus square root 15 over 4. And we know that the square root of 15 over 4 is the same thing as square root 15 over the square root of 4, plus or minus. And then, yeah. One, there you go. Then we'll subtract 1 from both sides. And y equals negative 1 plus or minus square root 15 all over 2. So, now I'm not sure if that's how they're going to write the final answer. That could be the final answer. Uh, we could also rewrite this. We could take this negative 1 and we could convert it again into a fraction. So we go 2 over 2. So we could write it as y equals negative 2 plus or minus square root 15 over 2 as well. So that's another format. So be comfortable with both. So there you have it. Hopefully that makes sense. See you next video.